Welcome to another session of Endless Space. Uh, I'm Matt, so this is my playthrough of Endless Difficulty, Endless Space 2 with the Hisha. And last turn we were starting to get into position to exploit this resource recoverer's perk, where we basically get double uh, value from our mining probes with our behemoth ships. So here, um, we're ready to edit our behemoth ship and put some fast miners onto it. Let's remove this gun, we don't need it. And we edit with dust, and now we're going to send it over here. To make sure Behemoth ship arrives on time, it's important to pick up this Behemoth generator. And what that does is mostly gives you this Behemoth flight systems. And that gives you a flat four points of movement on Behemoths, and that gives you movement without having to compromise your probe slots. So you have to choose between engines and probes on these probing Behemoths, and economic behemoths in general. But here we can just get some extra movement points which don't require um, uh, using up engine slots, which again don't require using up probe slots. And we get some other stuff which I haven't found the use for. Bonus vision is, I guess, kind of nice. And I'm gonna get rid of low free costs and need it. I'm gonna go for high Psi Act so we can get bonus science production. Now, um, I had to unfortunately re-record this episode, <laughs> and that because of that I'm going to make a couple of very, at least to my mind, uh, I made a couple of very instructive mistakes, let's put it that way, <laughs> and unfortunately those mistakes I couldn't catch on uh, camera because I, I made a mistake in the recording. So, I'm just going to have to tell you about them secondhand. So, we probably still want to send some populations to clusters, just to make sure that we're using up our food properly. I have to send two at once, I guess. The first thing, I want to get interplanetary transport on this system. Partly because I've actually got this quest, I forgot to mention, so we could choose whether to build ships with offensive power. Um, or possess ships rather, uh, build, uh, get a system with lots of uh, industry, or stockpile dust. And I'm just going to go for the industry one because that's the easiest to do and we want to pick up interplanetary transport anyways. I just want to get the K bonus to be honest. The question is, do I want to build warships first, or do I want to get this uh, wonder first? As the wonder's not going anywhere, and as it turns out, I do need quite a few warships to put pressure on pink. And also to lift the siege of this planet. Uh, these privateers are... Well, these ships are actually privateers for pink. Pink starts with the ability... Or Voldemort starts with the abilities to use privateers. And um, these can actually be ships in disguise, as I discovered in my lost recording. <laughs> in quite a humorous way. Unfortunately, you don't get to see me uh, learning by making mistakes. And instead, we're gonna we're gonna pick up hardened alloys here, so we can get more um, command points, meaning we can put more fleets together faster. Um, before we do that, is there anything we oh, is there anything else we need? Probably not. I mean, this atmospheric is something we want as well. The, just the benefit of picking up Endless Research Park is so good though, because because we're devoted, we're going to get a huge boost to our science and a huge boost to our dust. That kind of makes me feel like I want to prioritize this over the kites. Um, the main thing I learned from the last episode is I, I talked about how I wanted to activate all of the Red Blade. Uh, at length, and then I forgot to do it before a crucial fight on this planet. <laughs> I mean, I still won, but uh, that's the big takeaway. Always remember to activate all of the Red Blade. Especially in these mid-game turns, where you really have the K to spare. Now, we can colonize this at some point. I guess not before we get public-private on this extra modernization. Let's make sure that we're getting the most out of our dust here. I mean, our dust trees. And next turn we'll be able to, 
Well, the turn after that, we'll get... I Probably next turn we'll be here with generators. We'll get this here, retrofit it, send it back to Yenix. Fortunately, we can use... Um, extra... We can use a luxury resources to increase our dust that allows us to retrofit these behemoths. behemoths. And cancer is idle. It's the best kind of cancer. Um, but unfortunately, we also want to get some production out of it. So, Xeno industrial infrastructure is something we want because... I mean, something we already have in the system. It's always something we want in almost every system. Um, <laughs> uh, it's, it's really so good. And we're picking up on this hot and fertile planet because it will give us 20 bonus industry in addition to its base output because of the Xeno. And, and after that, probably drone network for a bit of extra food. Let's just always check that there are extra heroes. Another thing I learned in the other uh, the other episode that I unfortunately lost, or I remembered, is that you can always buy ships using the marketplace. And these are hunters, so they're, they're respectable warships. Um called cleaners. Somewhat strange, but okay. Okay, as I said, we picked up that quest really easily. On Kura, what do we want to get? We really want to pick up this technology, maximize exploitation, so we can get lava on these planets. Uh, so we can get these lava planets. But we need to make sure that we get hardened alloys. And the main reason is if you you just really need as many command points as you can get if you're fighting wars. That's the, the That together with having the best kind of ships you can get is the most important thing in war. I guess maybe first command points and then having better ships. If you have those two, you're just likely to win. It's kind of, and this base combat is sort of boring in that way because it just comes down so heavily to having command points and having better ships, both of which are like effectively having better technology because command points also, numbers also are determined by technology for command points. Alright, we want to get the ship over here as fast as possible. Let's go on this location. And uh, let's, we have the, we have the K, so let's war banners it to give it a movement speed bonus. Over here. Yeah. Ideally, we can send these two. Whoops, I forgot about this fleet. Let's send that there. So, because I forgot about this fleet, this is going to clag behind it, but that's kind of bad if we plan on insulting Pink's capital. But, um, yeah, it was a small misstep. Okay, we're just gonna wait till we have free mining probes for an exploit which I'll... I don't have an exploit or a weird thing about mining which I'll explain just now. So the strange thing is that if you save up uh, the maximum amount of mining probes, in this case three, and you wait and then you click on one planet multiple times, it will send all three probes to that planet. But it's not something you can do in a staggered way. Like if I sent out a mining probe right now and waited a turn and tried to send another one, I couldn't send it to this planet because I'd already be mining it. Um, and strangely, the, the duration uh, for the mining probes also stacks, if you do it that way. So here it says the probe has a lifetime of 4, so you can only probe for 4 turns. But if you do this triple thing, we'll be able to mo uh, probe for 12 turns. Which is kind of weird, because you're getting extra resources on the planet for longer. And that's that way you maximize your mining. Uh, again, this it's like quite strange and unintuitive the way that works. I'm not actually sure if it was intended by the designers to work that way. Now we can sell all of our dust litter. Oh, sorry, dark litter. And just send our ship there. And hopefully our, our fleets will link up in four turns, at which point we'll have picked up hardened alloys. We could have actually ordered this way, it might have been better. Whoops. Yeah. So let's continue to send the scout along here. Uh, 
doesn't actually matter. We lost a couple of movement points. And we gain some experience. Probably just getting the... We'll probably get the influence one next. Again, I stated earlier I wanted to... Okay, we discovered the academy. I believe possessing the system with the academy gives you a small bonus. Or some sort of significant bonus. What does this do again? You get bonus experience per year to turn or something. Hmm. That's interesting. So this quest is about... This is the, the issue of population quest. You get these quests if you have enough of the population of a major faction or minor faction. That you don't have to be playing as the Hisho Empire to get this quest. It's just that you have the population of your empire. And you can choose whether you appreciate or uh, are upset about the fact that the Endless Civilization, the, the great civilization that fell, and which a lot of these, these games are named after, uh, whether you appreciate the fact that they uh, genetically modified the Hisho to be better gladiators or not. We're going to pick Appreciate because having five plants of only show major population is going to be a lot easier than getting one religious or active for 10 turns. The shield bonus, this fleet shield, is quite nice, but similarly the ability to improve our lasers is also quite nice. And I didn't mention this before, but we have antimatter exploitation or empire, which is why I'm prioritizing this antimatter tech over neuro-robotics. Here I'm going to go for xenoanthropology because I want to change government types and I'm not actually sure how it works. <laughs> so it might take a couple of turns to change government types, in which case we definitely want to change government types before the next election. Or in the case of the dictatorship, like election in air quotes because nobody really gets elected. And now, in four turns, we'll get this endless research research park and endless world, which is really going to boost our dust and our science economy. And we have enough probes here to be able to fire it off again. Whoops. To be able to fire this off. Yeah. Send this over there. So, what happened there is that we sent all three probes at once, and as you can see, it's we're mining for 12 turns now, and also we're getting three times this, so we're actually getting uh, nine Hyperium. In the last episode, again, the one I had to do again, I sort of figured out that you, <laughs> it's weird, it doesn't display this properly, but we're getting three times what we should be getting, because we're sending a free probes at the time, and also the, weirdly, we're getting three times the mining duration for each probe, if you think about it. So we're getting three times, uh, we're getting three times the resources, for three times the time, so we're actually getting water of our probes this way. It's very strange how that works. But also very important that you do that clicky trick to maximize this. It looks like this probe, the scout is not getting much done, we'll just set it. Alright. We're just gonna get our fleets into position here. I really want to link up these fleets, uh, then take this planet back. Oh, do I have free points here? That would be bad. I should remember to religiously check whether I'm using these probes properly. Now, do I want bonus science or do I want bonus dust? I think the answer is science. We can actually get both here. That's good. Okay, one good way to do this is just to cycle through your behemoths through the idle fleet tab. Although, if you have a ton of fleets, that can be a real pain. You just sort of have to check up on your behemoths, which is kind of why I like the static ones more, because I'm lazy. <laughs> but, um, yeah, if we were playing the history, we can't really afford to be lazy. Okay, they want us to leave. And I don't want to leave. So that's that. They're already basically invading one of our systems. No which the privacy option lets them do without having to actually declare war on us, which is annoying. But we have to live with it. Now we could besiege Pictor and leave this system. 
Um, but I think I want to engage them here and have these backup fleets besiege this. They'll get there in three turns or four turns. Yeah. Hardened alloys will be available really soon. And once we have hardened alloys, we can just form up a 10 unit fleet. Which they'll probably have in a couple of turns too as well. Alright, I think we're close. Oh, wait, we. We've got, we've got the second last tier of abilities now uh, in the next level and we'll be able to get this huge industry boost and also this nice boost for behemoths. The extra behemoth production limit is really nice. It means we'll be able to get more behemoths without having to build these stupid shipyards things. Otherwise we have to build these to unlock extra behemoth slots. But with the Hisho, with the Hisho hero as a governor, uh, coupled with the Hisho uh, affinity for behemoths to start with. We really don't have to worry about that. We're going to be able to pick up a lot of behemoths without having to build behemoth bays, at least until we get into the really absurd numbers. Picking up behemoths is also a good incentive to improve your dust production. We're going to pick up sustainable farms here, 10 bonus food, something one on the system. Probably colonize that planet. And wait, there is also a hero available. And they have they have forced labor. This is really good for that system because they have enough food, for instance. Um, they have bonus influence, minus dust cost. They have some things that make them a good fleet commander. But we're gonna go continue with our strategy of having just a bunch of bad governors. <laughs> the strategy being uh, quantity over quality. So sometimes you just have to deal with what you're dealt with with the marketplace if you're going for this um, impactless side strategy. I mean, this game, it was definitely correct because of how late this academy unlocked. Um, and there's other things we can do to pick up more heroes. Like, I think this deed gives you a hero if you complete the first. Or well, there's some deed that gives you a hero. Very comforting, I know. Alright. Still okay. Now we can uh, bombard this poor planet with our probes. And when we do that, it increases the production of our main system as well. We just want to keep getting a number of kites. They're not the the greatest ships ever, but also we just need more ships if we're going to win this war. We're not at the stage where our ships just steamroll everything else. So, numbers do still matter. Interesting, I thought this was a one last turn. Oh well. Now we have enough dust that we can really think about adding ships. Okay, we've got a connection bonus for the Hisho, probably doesn't matter that much. I'm, I'm feeling sort of not risk averse. <laughs> I'm gonna pick Star Trial instead of Refuse Trial. Um, it just seems role-playing was appropriate too, like we're playing a military faction. Okay, we finally got the research block and look at how much dust we're earning a turn. And our science is also skyrocketed. So that wonder is really worth it. Um how many kites were I need? Maybe like four. And then after I picked up the kites, I could have been using this blood ritual more actively. Um but we, we didn't actually need the cave that much. We could have used the K if we were going for something like, um, if we were going for something like, excuse me, the Fealty Foundation, which we have unlocked at the moment. We could go use the Fealty Foundation on one of our planets here. Um, but 25k is quite a lot of population we have to sacrifice at the moment. That's maybe something we'll do later in the game, we really want to min-max. Let's also pick up air labor. And then I guess Intergalactic Technology Center is not it's something we kind of want. It improves our science by quite a bit per system level on this system, and also reduces the research cost for all technologies, which is really worth it. I'm just going to get two ships. I'm, I'm still feeling quite greedy. I suppose I never learned. I mean, it is good to uh, get as many systems as you can, 
I mean, sorry, it is good to spend as little on fleets as you can, because the less you spend, um, the more you are able to... Now I have to decide between bonus science, bonus dust. This is a lot of dust. We're getting a turn, though. Let's go there. Whoa! <laughs> That's crazy! How did the how did the jump up so much? Probes are completely busted the Hisha. Yeah, look at how much. This is probably percentage multipliers in addition to that, like um addition to the probe. Right, so we got the probes and then we've got resource covers on our main system, and then we're getting all these percentage multipliers, and that's probably what's increasing it so much. Madness though. Okay, we've stacked this together. And now let me not forget, put all of the red blade on our, sh our fleets, increases our hull absorption, oh sorry, hull plating absorption, our damage and our shield absorption. We could move our behemoth behind them to increase that bonus even further, but behemoth is doing good work there. Let me just apply that before fighting, like, I'm not going to make the same mistake. Say so confidently. So, getting dust bonuses is kind of incredible. Partly because of our research wonder. Uh, sadly, you didn't... I mean, sadly, I, I messed up with the recording. You didn't get to see the <laughs> the episode where I, I talked about activating all of the Red Blade, then forgot to do it on the critical battle, which is this battle. But... Uh, yeah. Do I really wish to push you? Possibly. And now we're gonna face... I'm not sure why they're making us face the small fleet first. I'm just gonna go with Team Spirit, as you can see. We have three fleets against one. So, morale bonuses... Um, are gonna be multiplied. You get morale bonuses if you have more fleets than the enemy. And they don't have... They have... We could try and capitalize on their lack of um, non-projectile weaponry, but let's look at our defenses. They're not that great against projectiles to begin with. And if we can close out the fight faster, that's better for us. Okay, that was completely decisive. And obviously they're from a different empire, namely the Maltas. Alright, now what is it? And again, we can go for Team Spirit. We can try and we can try and use uh, turtle against them. Fifty percent bonus protection. Well, protection is quite weak, anyways, against this. Let's try team spirit. And if it goes horribly wrong, then you'll know why. <laughs> and here we we still. I mean. We managed to win. It was a very close fight. That's where we gained a lot of K. Uh, we lost a lot of our old ships, but fortunately our kites survived. We managed to take out their longship, which is their equivalent of a hunter ship. And since we lost so many ships, we can think about buying ships to place them. Um, let me make sure that I remember the system, Kora. You have to choose the right system uh, when you decide to buy. Chips. So I'm gonna go with the hunter type because it just seems like it should be better. <laughs> Rational right there. It seems like it should be better. Let's do it. Okay, let's separate the kite because it's still damaged. Let's attack here. Okay, we can just continue to use Team Spirit, just a generic good upgrade. Actually, these cleaners have also decent advantages. Alright, so our commander is getting a lot of upgrades. So there, together using Order of the Red Blade and um, using Order of the Red Blade combined with uh, extra mercenaries, we managed to swing the fight there in our favor. And now we can probably start besieging these systems. Probably it's a. Well, these are both nice actually. Do you really wish oh, yeah, to push yeah. us? I missed diplomacy already. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I just... I, I don't think it's better at all, but I, I kind of, many times, just prefer playing more laid-back, uh, sort of, your empire-centric, or my empire-centric economic strategy. 
But, you know, now and then it's fine to just attack. So we're just going to probe this plant. Um, this plant this is still being probed. How long ago? It doesn't actually tell you. Um, I guess if it's, if it's a bug, then no wonder. But we can go to this planet, quickly probe it, and then come back to this. Um, or we can just wait here. I'm not sure which is best. We started this four turns ago only. Never mind. We should go down here. Okay, we're still waiting for that for some reason. Sadly, this behemoth is right here in the middle of nowhere. Um, might be better to put the behemoth somewhere here. But f sadly, annoyingly, you can only... Um, you only have a couple of behemoth slots, you can't just make a new one. Just place it like that. So if we make a new behemoth, we can quickly send it over. Um, I think I'd... We might want to move this back here, retrofit it, move it to a different sector of the galaxy. Maybe that's better. We have enough dust to do it. And, I mean, we're losing this K-zone here, but whatever. The system is... It's not like the system is going to be choked for industry at any point. Yeah, let's keep sending to Placidus. There's also a quest I'm supposed to be doing. So supposed to be doing. <laughs> supposed to be doing. Um... And to do that, I'm going to have to separate the populations, like a horrible segregationist. These quests, they actually do some messed up stuff, to be honest. Let's just put them all over there. Here we have two Hisho populations. Let's just cycle through our system to make sure that we have more planets with only Hisho. Because we don't like living together with other people like normal, civilized, and moral people like to do, apparently. Okay, no, can't do it there. I forgot about this plant. Uh, at this point, we might as well get the Graviton Chill and stuff. Alright. Evil segregationist politics continue. And we've done enough, I think, in that regard. Yeah. AI labor is going to be quite strong in the system. Two hots and one sterile. Turns out the planet is quite hot. Let's just go there. Then retrofit a behemoth, then send him somewhere here. Wait. Um, that's a giant floating brick or something. Not quite sure what the art is supposed to represent. The real downside of using... I think we're going to go for industry. Our system is not up and running yet. We got the bonus K from the quest. Always nice. We're not Cold War of Yellow again. But we really do need to prioritize crushing pink at the moment. And we can colonize this gas giant. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the the very appropriately named gas hot. Oh. Um. Because I'm like immature, always laugh at the gas warm planets. We can also pick up. We can also pick up interplanetary for the small boosts. I guess the small boosts in science are going to be. Now this is this is just not a great system for even those upgrades. I mean, I guess. If we have nothing better to do this, then we might as well go for that. Um, let's see what's happening here. We probably want sustainable farms once we pick up these extra plants. No, we definitely want that plant first, never mind. The extra antimatter is going to be great. We're already getting well, one antimatter, but whatever. Once we pick up that antimatter, that will really help us out. Um, and we can get sustainable farms after that, just to help us. Uh, Get enough food in the system. Again, no more heroes to purchase, but we have so many at this point. Seven heroes is quite a lot for the stage of the game. Really sort of show you how much of an economy we've built up using playing as the Hisho. Um, really makes me feel like this faction is quite busted. <laughs> 
It's not even like we've played like amazingly well. We've played well, but not that amazing. Like that, not that well. So if we want to get a level two monetization, let's think transfine. We have seventy five for each. We can always get enough dark lit because apparently um, we only deserve trash resources. <laughs> But we can't pick it up anyways. This is the real issue sometimes with these uh, modernization upgrades. You, you're going to struggle to get some of these luxuries sometimes. You have to make sure you choose ones that you can actually pick up. Transfine is something you can buy on the market. It does give us flat bonuses. This is reasonably valuable. We have so much dust we can probably afford to buy them. Hmm. Do I really do I really want Dark Litter though? The bonuses are not that great. Especially in a faction where we're really gonna get a lot of manpower. J Donix is something we can't easily pick up. Um, dust dust trees is something we already have. Although we're gonna stretch our dust trees reasonably thin. If we need them for two different types of leveling. Although it might be easier to just go like wait. It might be easier to just go like this in general. Hmm. This choice is quite difficult. <laughs> I shouldn't have bought all that transpired. I mean I had the money lying around. Yeah, let's actually look at the galaxy what we're gonna pick up in the near future. Okay, now here we can merge these leads. And we can start laying siege to this band. That's Horatio. No, wait. No, that's the lost Horatius from United Empire. Let's not do that. Okay, we can send this lead out. Possible I missed the turn there. Okay, let's edit this and let's send it out of the world. We can send it here actually, while we use this ship to continue to mine here. Like, really, every three turns we just get a huge boost of uh, resources. This is sort of part of what makes the Hisho possibly the strongest faction in the game. It's just these huge boosts of uh, huge bursts of resource advantages or huge bursts of resources, um, which gives you a solid advantage going into the middle late stages of the game. Now I can think about changing our government, and what that's going to do. Uh, it's going to cost us a lot of K's to downside. Uh, so it's dishonorable to change your government. And that's going to cost us in terms of resources. So it's quite bad. But at the same time we have as high K's we could possibly get. So having... Democracy is the easiest for us to switch to. We have free representations. Uh, the nice thing about Republic is that the law effects are intensified. If we have less laws, then we can or we can use our best two laws and make them much better. Um, but these are all more expensive to get. I think we'll probably go for democracy because it doesn't tote our K too much. Whereas dictatorship is... Dictatorship is uh, something we already have. Okay, we lose our laws during the period of anarchy. Which is slightly annoying. And also our K gets knocked down back to loyal. But because we're losing laws, we're going to knock it back up. I mean, this is... 
unfortunate for the time being. This is why it's, it's often bad to change government. But I figured it would be motivated specifically in this instance. Um, because we could... Because we really sort of want to have multiple senator, to senators, different types of laws enabled in our empire. I mean, just the militarist laws are things that we want. We want the militarist laws so that we can keep our militarist governor, our starting governor, uh, in power so that we have this bonus, and more importantly, this behemoth bonus on empire is really nice. But at the same time, we want to see if we can get other bonuses. So, what else? I guess we'll just get into Planet Intergalactic Technology Center. These wonders are things you often just end up getting if you have, um, like, with the Hisha, you're going to have such a huge economical um, starting system. We survive the hungry shadows. We will survive this. Okay, we have to pay influence to declare war now. I, am called the first of my I probably should have declared war before going into Anarchy. <laughs> She's like, I'm called the first of my blood, but we will be called the last of yours or something. I, don't know, I think that's her trash talk. Not bad, to be honest. So we have a good fleet over their main system. We can start whittling away that system with Siege. And we've just purchased a fleet to besiege these two systems. Again, it's just important that we're just constantly at war. Okay, am I wrong? <laughs> it is important that we're constantly putting pressure on other empires. Wait, let me actually check the system up before I commit myself. Which system is that you're on? We can get bonus industry. We can get this behemoth bonus. Both things we'll want. I guess we'll go for the Behemoth bonus first. Actually, we think we can already build another Behemoth, so that was a mistake. Whatever. So this system still needs extra industry, but at the same time it could benefit from having dust. I mean, the bonus dust is not something that's a huge priority, we can always come back to it. This hero is militarist. If we pick up this hero and pick up this on our Senate, we'll also be kind of quite happy. And we'll pick up AI labor later. So that manufacturing has been assimilated. And we continue to produce important things. We're just going to attack this. Sorry, Argosy. With my keeners. <laughs> Such odd ship names. Alright. How many... I wonder how many troops we have on these. Okay, we have 300 troops each. That's quite nice. I'm gonna send this over here. Continue to besiege this system. And there's uh, a bunch of ships that we're sending over here. For economy and uh, warfare purposes. Now we've researched all the things I wanted to research. Including changing government types. Possibly something I did a bit late. I haven't been. I'm always up. I'm not really up to date on how the how to really exploit the law system. Um, though again, like Hisho is so good. Like <laughs> winning on endless. Once you have this excellent start, it doesn't really matter too much that you play super optimally. As long as you have the, as long as you have the right strategy in mind, um, you can often afford to. Or, I don't know if a fortune is the right word, but you can often feel your way through a game. Obviously, you're going to make some mistakes. As I've been making here, but... If you have the right strategy in mind, you can... Um, just iron out those mistakes, maybe reload a couple of times. Um, just work on your fundamental play a bit, and then... If you're playing a strong faction like the Hisho and you're playing well well enough, you'll definitely be able to beat this game in Endless Difficulty. Um, it's not as difficult as, like, for instance, Endless Legend, which is grueling and punishing <laughs> <laughs> on the highest difficulty. Unless you're playing the Cravers equivalent, they're great. Um, now we can colonize this planet. 
hopefully at some point we're getting those extra populations I've been sending, in which case I've just been sending people away for no reason. Which again sounds great. I'm just gonna send them again. We're inching our way back to, uh, to Ecstatic K. And now let's check these fleets. These are... We can't actually see what they've got because they're annoying folk. And I can't reapply this Order of the Red Bane, sadly. They're using a lot of guns against us, probably because they've wised up. Um, it's a good trick to to start using different... Because, because of how... Okay, we won decisively, that's great. And now we're back into Devoted range. Perfect. So again, command points matter more than anything. They were countering our ships a bit, but command points. So, you know, that's how it goes. Now we've gotten all the probes activated here. Um, and as you can see, these probes are still rolling, like, what beasts. We can send this ship down here. Three turns is the absolute minimum when we want it, maximum we want it to travel, because in three turns it will have regenerated all of its probes. And then we can just go for another probing run. Now Spica is actually falling relatively slowly, but we have enough warships here that um, I don't think Pink can really hope to outproduce us on that front. And Pink has just lost a bunch of ships on their capital as well. Okay, we've got extra points here. I think I'm just going to go for that perk. Again, sometimes this... Okay, shut down protests. I can pardon the officer. But we get Dennis damage to fleets. Uh, and then a major... So we can keep sort of staggering this political crisis. <laughs> which is kind of cool. Um, I just... I guess I'm just going to go for the safer option. Pardon that officer. Now this gives us bonus influence. Which is going to be nice, considering we have an election upcoming. Hopefully this Anarchy... I think the Anarchy ends just on the turn in which the election happens. In which case, it was a brilliant decision. <laughs> and I'm so glad I tried that out. <laughs> and if it doesn't, if it, if, if it doesn't work out, that was a terrible decision. <laughs> Alright, let's go for Interplanetary. Actually, we should rather colonize these planets. A huge science boost. It's nice. This gives us a more varied boost. The system is it's gonna be kind of mediocre for a while. I mean the name suggests no good will cover this. I get I guess we get op we get optics in this plant in the system. Um it's the marketplace. There's still more transfine available. That makes me feel like there'll be enough transfine to be able to fund this. Uh, like, in my likelihood, I'm going to regret this. It's it's good practice not to stack the same resource type often, because often you'll you'll just run dry and run resource and have trouble leveling up your systems. Let's level it up after this. Actually, this will give us more than this, I think. Oh well, yeah, it will give us more general resources than this one. But somehow this is faster. Strangely. Watch how we're shaving a turn off there. Well, either way we're going that way. I think this just flat takes away two turns. Maybe that's it? That's kind of strange though. Uh, oh, I guess if flat takes away two turns, then we're losing out on the industry carryover. So when you finish something but you have industry left over, it carries over into the next production. But I guess if you assist in developing, it just destroys that carryover. In the sense that we use it forever. We will not forget you, carryover. We will not forget you. Alright, here they're sending their ship back, but that's good because it's walking straight into our trap. And here we are a turn or two away from just completely decimating the system, uh, the defenses of our siege. We have yet to build dedicated uh, super sieging ships. This improved fleet management is 
something we can think about. Additional manpower, map point deployment limit. This is the map point manpower deployment limit is, is really the nice thing, because then you can deploy more forces than they can deploy in defense. And here we get the better version of that. I'm not sure if we really need that though. I guess we're sort of overdue on picking up a bit, bit of better weaponry. We have so much extra titanium produced at it, although we're getting Hyperion for the probes temporarily. Um, I guess we can pick up another kind of ship. I guess we can think about getting the tier bonus in case this need is easy to get or important or valuable. Well, how do we get this? Oh, we, we, we built this, never mind. <laughs> How do we get this? It's busy building it. Uh, two trade companies is something we could do. And we get two resources and do luxury resource deposits and system trade value. Ultra Wolf Sanctuary sounds good. Um, and trade companies are something we want to go for eventually, anyways. Trade companies are just a way to turn excess dust production, aka this, into more dust and science in the future. And since we have so much dust, because we're so filthy rich, because we're playing as an overpowered faction, um, <laughs> it's something we should think about going for. Like, again, I hope I've impressed you with how strong this overall strategy is in the hit show. And we're really, we're really seeing how many, like, just numbers you can put up, actually. They have a they have a behemoth there, that's kind of funny. Stop blocking me, read. Okay, look, just get out of the way, dude. And we can set this kite down here, and with that kite, we should be able to take out whatever this is. It's an economic behemoth. And an economic behemoth has guns, obviously. Like, well, why wouldn't it? Like, why? <laughs> the question is can we take that behemoth using what we have at the moment? I'm not actually sure does prevent us from invading. Let's just wait a turn, pull our kite down, and see what happens. We, in the meantime, we should invade, engage with this ship. Okay, we need to increase morale. We still have the bonus. And decisively, we won. Send it to we muddled. So, this is a a story event where we can choose between a little bit of extra influence and using these spies to cheat during an election, which makes it easier for us to favor the fact parties we want to favor. I'm just going to try the spies. I'm in the mood for some <laughs> espionage, as it were. Um, we picked up, I guess we'll pick up predictive logistics. It will take some time to get this off the ground, but it will really boost this industry of the system. And this is a system that's sorely needing of industry. Sorely lacking in industry. Let me just pick up the logistics here as well. Once we've picked up all of these things, it might just be it might be a bit irresponsible to go for all of these things when we really want to pick up better warships. I guess we really do want this. I don't have any adamantium, which is kind of a pain. I'm not sure where I can find any though. Does Picto have any? There doesn't seem to be any adamantium nearby. Unless we don't have the exploitation for it yet. No, we do have it. Where is adamantium? This is kind of annoying about these high tier strategics. Sometimes it's just rare and it's difficult to find them and then like. Oh, here's adamantium. Oh, great. It's on another of empire's turf. We don't really want to attack that empire. Okay, after we pick this up, it does actually look like we need a bunch more ships, to be honest. Yeah, maybe we want to dial that back. Just pick this design up, see if it's better than the Hunter. And we'll pick up commercial frameworks eventually. We could, I mean, yeah, we could still make some... The reason I, I really just want this high tier. Alright. Wait. We select a party to support. And I'm not sure... Oh, this is democracy. That's good. So we have the militarists. 
Our senator isn't showing there. Hopefully we get the same senator. That'd be disaster if we didn't. Show laws. Industrialist law. Um, oh, I, I, I went for the extra cheat, cheat, and I can't actually cheat on democracy. <laughs> or at least I can't cheat at the moment. Um, we can go for, we can support the industrialist or the religious party. Admit and improve is quite nice. Um, bonus experience on our heroes is something we'll benefit from quite a lot. Um, although the industrialist, industrialists uh, have a good end game in work not choke. Although we have so much industry already, maybe we'll go for religious religious. Religious is quite strong anyways. Mostly I want to submit an improved thing. Okay, never mind, industrialist one. Like <laughs> why even? Okay, changing government type means that we lose uh, all the laws that we built up. Which is kind of frustrating. But this is not bad. At the moment. Well. Anarchy is a very strange thing. So we've completed our little uh, experiment in uh, changing government types. Uh, we, our K is back up. And we're now democratic <laughs> space samurai birds. Oh, and we still got this? What the hell? Okay, this is really confusing. Okay, we, we finally got, we got, um, we got the higher tier uh, military laws. I saw them as really good on the other factions because it gives you bonus happiness per enemy, uh, per home system you've got. We don't have any home systems though. So we just get one bonus industry per plant, which is itself not bad. Um, but... Yeah, not something we're going to benefit from super much unless we're gaining a ton of K. We can go for the screen fertility bill. Um, go back to brains of a box to turn some more extra dust into science and high sci act because we can afford to bleed a little bit of K at the moment. And our endless research park is still preventing that from really impacting us too much. The question is can we afford to get a fealty center now? Or maybe we should spend our K more, um, I don't know, boringly. <laughs> I don't know what the right word is. Let's send that, send that through, send that through down there. Uh, this is sadly up to date. Come on, just go through. Wait, can't it go through? I'm so confused. Never mind. So. We want to retrofit this, give it the fast miners, apply that design, send it there. Once this has three, again, always count to three, and then send them all down there. So, um, we've gotten this Komachi Academy, and here's the next um, part of our faction quest. Question, question is, do we retrench? Do we become old? Uh, we return to the old ways? Um, or do we... Um, do we retrench to the old ways and old traditions? Or do we change our uh, faction? So, we're kind of playing as the reform or the traditionist in a way. Um, versus and our characters fighting against the reformers. So the question, there's two ways we can do this. We can either generate, either way we get a random technology. The rewards at this point aren't really that interesting. We can choose to improve our influence or we can choose to improve our manpower. Um, so this is one way you gain uh, recruits for the blood sisters and, um, or we can convince others of the power of the blood sisters. I guess the capacity should be easiest to do. I'm not actually sure. If we just capture another system, I think this will improve our capacity.
This academy was really nice. These these upgrades are all really nice. We don't really need a huge amount of influence production. We have as much as we need at the moment. Um, yeah, we really do that. So this choice is about star systems, trade value versus converting dust, the food into dust. We get a ton of dust if we do the second one, but I don't want to compromise our food production. So I'm just going to go for the star systems, uh, star system trade. And we got another, obviously got the other wonder. Now we have these two shuttles here. We really have to bust through this if we want to attack here. I'm not sure why all of my kites are stuck here. This is a bug. Weird. Or did I just like forget to end the turn? <laughs> Alright, we can think about attacking Spicker. How many forces do we have? We have notably more forces than they have. But of course they can draft, which is always annoying. We should upgrade our tanks at this point. Um, and we can also think about picking up air. Though air is of course only here. To be too honest, this integrated theatre is amazing. Although we don't have enough ships to make use of it that much. Wait, I was, I was gonna change the tanks. <laughs> Alright, let us let me upgrade it like this and I have the resources for that. So we've upgraded our tanks and I guess we can still keep besieging that. Um, I think next turn we're just gonna set these down here and or blast the behemoth up in the sky to keep blockading us. All right, so um, we've really accelerated the faction quest at this point. At turn 60, our economy is really roaring. We have high K values. We can use this wave of the Obsidian Eagle next turn, along with alongside other perks to exploit some of that K, even think about going for a fealty center at some point. And um, our economy is so good, in fact, that I probably shouldn't, uh, shouldn't stop neglecting uh, warships and build a couple. Actually, we should actually edit the warship designs. So, long story short, <coughs> uh, these economic behemoths are really doing a ton of work for us. We should probably construct a couple more in the next couple of episodes and really snowball this uh, economic position we're in. Uh, we're getting to the point where we don't have to put that much pressure on other empires. As you can see, the if we had a conquest victory, we'd still be a while off. Um, and we've gotten enough, we've gotten a decent amount of planets uh, using these warships. But really, at this point of the game, we can start leaning on the behemoths quite heavily. So join me next time as I continue my playthrough of the Hesha, decide what to do with uh, this war against pink, and uh, really continue to ramp my economy up using these powerful uh, behemoths and their probes. So I hope you enjoyed and tune in next time to see how things keep going.